Delvecchio again, now known as the Hyper Chef. We were doing some research and I couldn't do the Frantic Chef, so we tried Franzi, but we're going with Hyper Chef. Since I move fast, I talk fast, and this is how I am. Once again, I'm gonna be showing recipes that are inspired by my heritage, by my mom and by my nami, and also things that I've learned or adapted along the way, especially for the modern kitchen, and to do things quickly. Today, we're going to make a quick arrabbiata sauce. For those of you who do not know, arrabbiata means yelling. Why it's called an arrabbiata sauce is because it's spicy. I use this sauce as a dipping sauce that I serve when I make rice balls, which we'll do on a later date. I also serve this with fried calamari. Uh, my kids like it to put over a quick pasta sauce because it's the fastest sauce you'll ever make in your life. But today we're going to make it with turkey meatball sliders. So we're gonna start as follows. For this sauce, I always use a red onion, although you don't have to. Again, the whole point of this is whatever you have in the kitchen, use. If you have a white onion, a Spanish onion, which otherwise known as a Vidalia, whatever you have, make do with it. Shallots, whatever you have. So we're gonna take the onion, and we're just gonna cut it crudely. That's all we need to do because we're going to use the immersion blender. So that's all we need of that. So we're gonna put that there to that side. Now, hot pepper rings. This brings some of the heat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, these are standard hot pepper rings that you use for a sandwich toppings that you find basically where the olive oil and vinegar are in your supermarket. Very easy to find, B and G. There's many, many brands. You can't miss it. So we're gonna take this and look once again, a crude chop because the immersion blender is gonna break it up. Now, we're gonna take some olive oil, we're gonna put it in the pot. Now, again, I learned how to cook for my grandmother and my mother, it's all eyeballing. So I'm gonna put a little olive oil in here, just like that, I'm going to turn the heat on. Now what I'll do is to wait for the sizzle, I'll throw a piece of onion in to act as my thermometer. We're gonna put this off to the side, use it for future use, um, and then once this starts to sizzle, we're gonna add the onion and we're going to add the hot pepper rings. We're going to season it, we're going to allow it to saute down and then we're going to continue on making our sauce. The longest wait is for the oil to start up. Once that starts up, the sauce is going to fly. Of course, your handy dandy wooden spoon, not just for beating your kids anymore. So, if you grew up in Patterson like I did, you get that joke. All right, so this is just about ready. And then when we finish this, we're going to, after we make this, we're going to make, uh, with turkey chopped meat, we're going to make turkey meatballs that I'm going to fry, which I never fry my meatballs, but for this dish I do, because this is like an appetizer dish or something to put out for like a football Sunday or for a tailgate, um, any kind of a party where you're serving appetizers, because it's a nice grab and go. And it's nice because it's a slider with an Italian flair. You can also do the same thing with plain meatballs if you want to. All right, this is starting to sizzle. So we're gonna drop that in. And now we're gonna drop in the hot pepper rings. So, as I always say, we season each step. So we're gonna season this with a little kosher salt and not get burned in the face, hopefully. You all saw that. And then we're gonna throw a little black pepper on them as well. And now what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna allow that to cook down and we're gonna have the flavors mix. Very, very straightforward, very, very simple. Okay, now the onions are cooked down. So what are we going to do? We're gonna add four of these 14 and a half ounce cans of diced tomatoes in. Or you could use a bigger can. Uh, normally when I make this recipe, and I'm just making it for spicy sauce to serve over pasta, or to accompany the arancini, which is the rice balls, I only use two cans. But because I'm gonna be putting the meatballs in here, I need more space. And you're gonna say that looks very, very chunky. And yes, it does right now. But we're gonna let this cook, cook down and then we're gonna use the immersion blender to bring it down into a, more of like a filetto di pomodoro because what's gonna happen is it'll be a little chunky, but there'll be a little more smoothness to it and you'll see it turns into like a pretty pink color. So now we're just gonna let this warm up and cook down a little bit before we add any more ingredient. Now we are going to add the wine. Now just a side note, normally I add the wine when I'm sauteing, after the onions and peppers are sauteed down, but I forgot. And remember, cooking does not have to be a precise thing. So I'm gonna put the wine in now and then we're gonna wait for it to cook off before we add the final ingredients and use the immersion blender. The uh, wine, how you know when it's cooked off is it won't smell that strong alcohol bitter smell anymore. Like that's still there, but let it lay on top, do not stir it, because if you stir it in, the wine is gonna mix in. What you wanna do is leave it on the surface and have it evaporate and just leave, leave behind those mellow flavors that accentuate the tomatoes. All right, the wine is now cooked off. I let it cook off for about two minutes. It's all cooked off. As you can see, this is a very, very chunky sauce. Now we're gonna flavor it, and then we're gonna use the immersion blender. So, hot sauce. 
This is the arrabbiata sauce and additional hot peppers. I'm putting a bunch of franks in. We love franks in this house. Then remember, tomatoes are a fruit, as I said before. So again, measure like my nani did, my nani palmful, which is about a tablespoon. Since I did a double, I do it twice. Tomatoes are a fruit, so I take a lot of salt. If you don't, you'll end up with sweet and a little too sweet. I personally never put sugar in, I've never understood that, but I know people do that. Now, we're gonna take the immersion blender and we're gonna smooth the sauce out. This is a really old one. It was my grandma's, as you can see by the avocado green handle. And all you do, make sure you have it at the bottom of the pot, because if you don't, you'll have quite a mess. And as you can see, see how it's smoothing out? Ooh, that's hot. And all the tomatoes, that's why we only crudely chopped them. We want to have some chunk to this. Uh, by the way, we discovered by accident that if you serve this cold afterwards, it makes a really good salsa to serve with chips as well. So you can actually make a homemade salsa the same way. So this arrabbiata sauce has many, many functions. And you can make this and you can freeze it and thaw it out as you need it. So you can do this in the head. All right. Now, I've used the immersion blender. That's it. The sauce is done. I put the lid on and I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes and now we're going to start the turkey meatballs. All right, so I'm just going to give it a start. That's done. Lower the heat. Matter of fact, I'm going to put this on the back burner since I'm going to need this burner again. And there we go. Turkey meatballs. Ground turkey. Very healthy, much better than ground beef. Use 93.7. You have to use the 7% fat. The 1%, 991 is just too lean. It'll make a dry meatball. Now, for every pound of meatball mixture, I always use two eggs. I used to use one, and I was always complaining that my meatballs were too dry. My mother said use two meatballs, two eggs. That's what she does per pound. And so that's what I've done ever since, and it works out much, much better. So now, I put in two eggs. One of the few times I use a dried herb, dried parsley, a nice handful. And before you drop it in, crush it. Then, nice handful of Locatelli cheese. I like Pecorino Romano, but I like the Locatelli brand. That's my favorite. Nice big handful of that. You can never go wrong with that. You're gonna put some black pepper in. So basically, when you see me make my regular meatballs in another segment, you'll see it's basically the same ingredients. Breadcrumbs, a nice pine palm full to bind them. I don't do the bread soaked in milk. That was never my thing. And the only extra ingredient I'm adding is I'm going to add some hot sauce since these are supposed to be spicy. So we're gonna throw some spot, spot, hot sauce in. Now, there's no clean way to do this. And by the way, the breadcrumbs I always use are plain breadcrumbs, I don't use seasoned. I like to season myself, plus, as you'll hear in many of my videos, I'm allergic to garlic. So the seasoned breadcrumbs don't really work too well for me. So yes, an Italian allergic to garlic, I know, I know. So. I add a little more breadcrumb because it was too loose. Uh, turkey is very soft compared to beef, so they have to be tight enough that I can bind them. And then what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to rinse my hand, not just to get the meat off my hand. What you really want to work this through like you're mushing it. See, you really want to work it through. But what I want to do now is I'm going to give it a second to rest and rinse my hand because they roll better when your hand is wet. So I wet my hand and I didn't dry it on purpose. And I'm going to slide this over and turn the heat on because I like to multitask. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get that heat going. I'm gonna turn the back one down the simmer because that sauce, believe it or not, is done already. And I'm gonna pinch off, I'm gonna roll. Pinch off and I'm going to roll. And that's all there is to it. A lot of times I'll put the TV on and do something else because it's a little, you know, it's a little on the mindless side. It's very repetitive. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly fry these and then I'm going to drain them on paper towel. And I have this great ingredient called the spider, this great um, piece of equipment called the spider, which is from my Chinese cooking days, which is something we'll talk about in future segments as well. That is definitely something I wasn't taught at home. And we're going to drop these in and fry them. I just use this little plate because what I like to do is I'll roll them as I go along one of the things you can do on these and on regular meatballs, you can roll them in advance and put them, refrigerate them raw till you're ready to use them. And that actually allows them to set a little bit better because it'll be a little harder. That actually works well when you're working with turkey or chicken because turkey or chicken is very soft. So as you can see, you end up with a nice number of them for a pound. And you can adjust it depending on how many guests you're going to have. 
I, I get sloppy and my size gets bigger and bigger as I get to the bottom because I just start to rush, which is why I'm the hyper chef. So now there's no ripples yet, so we'll keep rolling. And then I'll show you as I drop the first couple in the fryer. In the fryer, I have put, you can put your vegetable or canola oil. Um, I don't go too high, I like to go halfway up the meatball. And you're gonna see it's now warm enough because it's starting to sizzle. And like I said, I don't fry my regular meatballs uh, the way I learned to make them. You boil them right in the sauce. Both my mother and my grandmother did them that way. So that's the way I learned to make them. They are much healthier that way. You have to render the sauce sometimes a little bit because I use 80-20. But here with the turkey chopped meat, it's less of a worry because turkey chopped meat is just inherently less fatty. And I actually think it's absolutely delicious. So why did I pick turkey over chicken? Chicken can be a little too soft and chicken actually is a little more fatty. So I, I like the, the leanness of the turkey. So we're gonna put these in and we let them get golden brown. Why I turn this down? If I was gonna serve these just fried, you have to cook them all the way through. Since I'm gonna serve them in a sauce where they're gonna boil, they're going to basically go poach a little bit. It's fine if it's not as wash the turkey off that later. So now we just have to wait for these to brown a little bit and then we will flip them. Okay, as you can see, if you look at these, you'll see that where they're coming out of the oil, they're starting to get white. And I'm gonna flip them and you'll see they have little brown marks on them. And that is when you know they're getting ready to be flipped. This is called a spider. This is a, a, a utensil that's used in Chinese cooking. I find it very useful to flip them. I do this for my rice balls. Anytime I need to you know, scoop things out in a hurry, this is a lot easier than a slotted spoon. The bamboo handle stays cool. I highly recommend you get one. Um, I, I used to get this at a Chinese cooking store. Uh, there are many of those around, Asian groceries. If you don't find that, you can always get them online as well. Now we're just gonna let them sit and we're gonna let the other sides cook and then we'll take them off. The sides are now cooked. So now they're going to come out. See how nice this uh, spider is? Put them onto the paper towel to drain. Matter of fact, since I know they're all coming off, I don't have any more to fry, I turn the heat off to reduce the chance of splattering. Nothing's worse than getting hit in the face with some oil. It's happened many a times to me. So off they're gonna go, they're gonna drain on paper towel. I'm also gonna pat them dry on top. And watch how quick this is. I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna move that to there. I'm gonna turn up the back burner. Bring this back up front. Look at that. Sauce is all ready. I'm going to grab a paper towel. I'm going to lightly blot the grease off the top of these. You see it's not that much grease. I'm going to lightly blot the grease off these. And then in they go. them in the longer they sit the more they are going to soak up the spicy sauce all that spicy goodness is going to go right into the turkey making turkey which can be a dry meat very succulent put the lid back on let it sit you can do that in the morning you can do it the day before and reheat it right in the same pot and again another one pot appetizer or meal all right so now here comes the taste test potato roll dinner roll size potato roll you're going to take one I'm gonna take it out. I'll take some of the sauce off so I can get it on the bun. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the sauce, put it right over the top. Then a little grated cheese. Mange. Enjoy. As my nani would say, manja con bon gusto.